Welcome back Bitcoin developers. This is video number two in a series on the Bitcoin Dev Kit CLI tool. We're going to take a look at the workflow of the tool and how to use the help command to explore it. Let's go. Whenever you start playing around with a new command line tool, the first thing you usually want to do is try the help flag. And so here I'm going to do BDK CLI help. And what I see at the very top is a little bit of metadata, for example, the version number, the maintainers of the project, and some short explanations. Next are four blocks of information, usage, flags, options, and subcommands. The basic workflow of the tool is to call BDK CLI and then give it a command. And each of those commands in turn can have a subcommand as well. So for example, I could say BDK CLI help, meaning I want help with a particular subcommand, in this case, key. And now it's printing the help message for the key subcommand, which has commands of its own, namely derive, generate, help, and restore. You can think of the functionality of the tool as a tree of command and subcommands. So for example, from the BDK CLI root, I can call the key command, and from there, the restore subcommand. Let's see what that looks like from the terminal. So I'm trying to learn how to use the restore command. I'm going to do bdkcli key, and I want help on the restore command. If you take a look at the help message there, an important block is the usage block. It's letting you know how you can use the command. Whenever you see square brackets, it means that things are optional. And so you don't need to put anything there, but if you were to put optional things like the password in this case, this is where they would go. Notice that the mnemonic is not part of the square brackets, and so it will be mandatory. In this case, the restore command would look something like this. At this point, there are two more blocks I want to look at from the help printout. They are the flags and the options. You can think of flags as um, sort of toggles. They're either on or off, but they don't require any arguments. So for example, the verbose here is either there or it's not there, whereas options will require an argument to be provided to them. For example, the wallet command requires the descriptor option, which means you're going to need a descriptor. The last thing that's important to know is that the Bitcoin Dev Kit CLI doesn't keep any private keys stored anywhere. So you're going to need to provide the keys in the form of a descriptor every time you want to use the tool. The CLI tool does use a small database, but it only contains publicly available things. And you can think of it as sort of a cache. If you lose it or delete it at any point, you can just resync the wallet to recreate it. In practice, what that means is that if I want to sync a wallet and get the balance for it, for example, I'll need to do it in two different commands, and each of them will provide a descriptor. Here I'm going to sync, and my second command will get the balance. If you're working with a single wallet and you want to give it multiple commands, one after the other, you've got one more option you can work with the REPL. REPL stands for Read of Out Print Loop, and it's a pattern that allows you to stay sort of inside the tool as opposed to exiting it at every command. So once you're inside the loop, you can enter as many commands as you want on that one wallet. And you know you're in the REPL because the prompt is different. Check it out. I'm going to clear my screen here, and the command I'm going to use is REPL, and then it requires a descriptor, which I'm going to give. The exact format of descriptors is not important for this video, but notice that now the prompt is different, and I can sync my wallet, get a balance, for example, and get addresses out of the wallet. I can use the help command to see what's available to me at this point, and notice that the help printout is the same as before. And now I can exit the REPL anytime I want using the exit command. And that's it for this one. I'll see you in the next video where we're going to take a look at how to generate wallets.